Now, when you were in detention, there was a, there was a time when it became so hot. The news was that we're going to do this to show it. We're going to do this story. Yeah. Now, from the blues, there was a letter that was circulated all over the internet that came from a New Jersey senator, Senator Bob Menendez, yeah. that was sent to the Nigerian government. And I believe that that letter went a long way in making the Nigerian government know that the American government is aware that one of its citizens, by person of Omoyele Shoere, are in your hands. And we, our eyes are in on you. We would ensure that you do not do anything arbitrary to him. We would ensure that you do not do anything out of the books to him. How much did that letter from the U.S. Senator of New Jersey help in ensuring that the Nigerian government did not mahandle or did not go beyond the extra judicial things to do anything yeah. to you? Because it was a huge thing for we in diaspora. We're like, oh, so the senator of where you are, the states that you claim over here in the U.S., has a voice over you even when you go back to your country. So it was a huge thing for us. So tell us, how much did that letter from Senator Bob Menendez help the Nigerian government to say that, hey, this is a golden child for us. Don't do anything to him. Well, I have to correct the impression that I'm, a, I'm not an American citizen. I only have what they call legal permanent residency in the U.S. But I have kids here that are American, that and wife American, American citizens. citizens so, and I have to give the credit to my wife and the diaspora for put, pushing very hard for my kids to rise to those levels. But let me tell you the other side of the story, which is our own representatives in Nigeria. The person representing me, <laughs> the House of Rep, was supposed to come and take my bail. He ran away. Just to sign bail papers, bail papers. to give his own documentation and say, look, I'm standing shorty for sure. He ran away. Another senator. Please, let's, let's bring out facts. Who, who is that representative? <laughs> his, his name is. What is his name? What is the constituency well, he's representing? I, 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 he's representing a larger SL to federal constituency. Of what state? Of Ondo State. Of Ondo State, yes. Elijah yes. Sel do yes. federal constituency yes. of Ondo State. I think his name is Ak uh, Honorable Akinjo. Okay. Yes. That was so the person who was supposed to come and sign shorty for you to leave. They went to him, said, Come and sign shorty for sure. After I was granted bail, bail. under some extra, you know, extraneous conditions, extreme extreme conditions. Where he was he, supposed to be one of the shorties. Shorty. He disappeared. Yeah. There was another senator that investigated. How I was abducted, you know, I was abducted in front of a judge. And one day, the day I was released, the next day they came to court, tears said, and abducted, and we had a whole fight. What? The judge ran, and her wig was flying in the air. She forgot her shoes. Uh, you know, it was, it was a mess. That one is Bami Dilly, I'll pay him. I know Senator. He investigated, he was the head of the Judicial Committee in the Senate. In the Senate. He investigated that. Uh, Till today, Okoyemi did not release the report. Meanwhile, Bob, uh, Bob Menendez, who is like far away here, 10,000 miles, miles away, away from you, he took up the case. Not only did he take up the case and write a letter, he pushed it to the point that Nigeria was supposed to get a $300 million grant. grant. No, it was money that was released to them from an anti corruption. They recouped some money, money yeah. from the Apache regime. And they made it clear that if they don't release me, they will not get, they will not get that money. It was at that point that Buhari quickly running ran and released me the night before Christmas of 2019. So, of course, what does this tell you is that whatever it takes, they show to the world that they value their own citizens their or their own people or even relatives of their own citizens. Whereas my own representatives abandoned me. They abandoned till today. When I came back two weeks ago, it was a U.S. representative in this area, yeah. in the sixth district, Josh uh, Gottheimer, a member of Congress. He did an elaborate ceremony for me in Howard. Came there, everybody was there. It was covered by all the media here. I was living. I was post even in, in even customs immigration. They were pursuing me. NDLA, the day I was leaving, want to see your bag. And the immigration guy said, I cannot film. I had to insist on filming. He said, I'm not going to let you go. I said, well, I don't mind. But if I don't go, you know the implication. So because I took camera to the airport. Yeah. And my own is that 
we have to allow transparency in these places. Do you know that if they allow cameras in Nigeria in the airport, all these immigration they officers will stop asking, asking, people asking people for stupid money? The U.S. used to say no camera, but now if you arrive in the U.S., you can't say anywhere they say you can't use camera. Nobody asked me why I turn on my camera. Nobody. You are at liberty to film wherever you want. And this is how people are governed. Because governance is, is not just by those who are elected to govern or appointed to govern. It's also by those who are governed. In fact, they have the biggest say in how they want to be governed. So, I've told you this story to tell you the impact of the little efforts that people, but we can't go and just praise Menendez as well, or Gotham without also praising the Nigerian diaspora community because they did everything they can. Ever. Protest, I've seen protests at the Nigerian house, you know, uh, uh, Bar was there, a lot of Nigerians were there, you know, they were, in fact, it was those people and my wife that took the matter to the U.S. Senate and Congress and said, you know, there's a guy who's a journalist who's detained in Nigeria, you know. But <laughs> the, the downside of it is your own people, the so-called elected leaders of Nigeria, they are more interested in sharing uh, 150 million naira SUVs. And, you know, and you, you hear the scandal about budget padding. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's what they go to do. And, and that's why I said to Nigerians, we must abolish by camera legislative system. We don't need... 400 people in the house. They're not doing it. These guys are hustlers. Let's just have maybe 80 something senators, yeah. two senators per state. state. And it's enough. All these other people that you just. They don't even come to work. You go and watch their plenary session. Out of the 109 senators, maybe if you find 50, you are lucky. And we can have a part time law making system. You understand? Where if you want to know that you are serious, let's be paying our senators minimum wage, 30,000 naira. Let's see if anybody will contest to be senators in Nigeria. <laughs>